So thank you very much, Patricia, for giving us this time. Um, I would like to ask you a couple of questions. So the first one, uh, you've said that the lives of millions of people depend on decisions made here at COP17. Which decisions need to be made and what would the precise results be? Well, I think that uh, we have a very, very clear agenda set for this conference and all of the decisions are very important because they are all, all intended to put in place a, a real a formal architecture in order to make it possible that we develop at uh, the global level a worldwide very ambitious program uh, in, in the area of climate change. We need to have uh, the Green Fund established, financing is, is crucial. We need to have uh, the different technical in, uh, mechanisms and institutions working, like the technology mechanism, like the adaptation committee. We need to also uh, have a, a good system of uh, monitoring and verification of the commitments regarding uh, mitigation goals, but also about the commitments for financing of activities in developing countries. And at the same time, we also need to meet the challenge of uh, looking at uh, what kind of regime we are heading for in the future, because uh, we need to overcome the skepticism that is uh, uh, is developing uh, due to the fact that the first commitment period of the Kyoto Protocol will come to an end soon. Okay, and in particular, what is Mexico looking to achieve in these talks? Well, we, we want, as you know, we are very committed to this agenda, the uh, agenda against climate change. So we want to, to be part of, uh, of the process, this incremental process. We are very, very conscious that it is uh, a step-by-step -step process. We cannot uh, think that uh, solving uh, such a complex issue like uh, the fight against climate change will be possible through one single decision. So we want to, to be part of this. Uh, of course, this is uh, independently of the commitments that we unilaterally have undertaken. Okay, and well, there was a sense of optimism after Cancun negotiations. So do you think this has been maintained during the year and in this COP? Well, I think we are starting the, the conference again with a lot of challenges. I think that uh, um, the, as you say, the optimism that developed after Cancun was due to the fact that we could demonstrate, not only get to a lot of agreements uh, that we have mentioned, but uh, also demonstrate that the multilateral uh, system is a, a system that can and is able to achieve uh, results and understandings between uh, the different members of the international community. So I think we need, this is not something that, that stays there. We need to feed this, uh, this confidence in the multilateral sector. I, uh, I know that the South African government is very committed towards uh, also ensuring an open process, a process that, that can lead to results. Okay, and uh, a bit of more of a personal question. Um, how do these negotiations impact your life? Is it only a job or does it go beyond? Well, first of all, of course, it's, um, it's an experience that I will have with me for the rest of my life. As you can imagine, this is a, a very significant process. It has, uh, um, it has meant a lot of uh, uh, personal sacrifice and effort. Uh, in terms of leaving the family behind, in terms of uh, really devoting so much time to traveling around the world. But at the same time, it gives me also a lot of personal satisfaction beyond the professional one. And uh, as a career diplomat, I am a, a very, very used to uh, taking all these uh, issues that are important for the future of, of our country, of Mexico, but also of mankind as a very serious matter and uh, that goes beyond the specific moment. All right, and our last question. So, uh, Latin American countries face similar challenges for climate change. Why do you think they have such different positions at these talks? 
Well, I think we are a very diverse uh, region, like uh, all all regions, and uh, I, I would I would say that uh, we in in Latin America at the end we have uh, all uh, understood that we need to to work towards the the common ground and to towards making a contribution. I have to say that uh, with the exception of Bolivia, if you remember last year, uh, there was really a great, a great support of the Latin American and Caribbean countries. So I think this, this spirit uh, will prevail. Well, thank you very much.